Okay, we're going to get underway now. And we're going to title this critical portion, Finding Grace in the Eyes of the Lord. Finding Grace in the Eyes of the Lord. That is viewing the process of the fall, separation, division, inversion from a divine, holistic perspective. Viewing the process of the fall, separation, division, inversion <clears throat> from a divine, holistic perspective, All right? So I told you that when I awoke this morning, it was like I was seeing a mental image of a word written in three, three foot high, four foot high letters. And it was the word grace. It was the word grace, okay? Uh, if your microphones are, are open and your, your um, uh, phones are not on mute, if you could mute them at this time. Uh, just want to remind you, Nasik, I told you we wouldn't have no more problems, you know, with the broadcast today. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> I told you that. <laughs> that was handled. That was handled. So <clears throat> this word grace, family, is what we want to uh, focus in on. And as you'll see, this is a brilliant choice uh, from a holistic perspective, a, a brilliant term, a brilliant choice a brilliant choice of a word to understand, <clears throat> to bring some perspective to where we currently are in this process of ascension. Each of us should be familiar somewhat with this term grace. And usually when we hear this word, we automatically, you know, from a Hebraic standpoint, uh, most of us are familiar uh, with the Hebraic perspective, we uh, relegate the word grace to Christian doctrine, to Christian doctrine and to this so-called myth of Jesus Christ and to New Testament churchianity or New Testament Christianity or New Testament belief. Is that not correct? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why mm -hmm. yeah, that's what my thoughts were as you said it. We mm -hmm. automatically assume that, but I'm gonna make this statement, then I'm gonna go about and prove it to the absolute, in the absolute to the absolute degree. Under the influence of deception, grace is grace. In other words, New Testament grace equals Old Testament grace, and Old Testament grace equals New Testament grace. Therefore, family, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, Christian grace equals Hebrew grace. And Hebrew mm -hmm. grace equals Christian grace. Mm -hmm. That is an absolute statement. But under deception, under the influence of deception, we thought we were not under grace. We thought we that was not a part of doctrine. That is absolutely not true. And... <clears throat> As we view this from a divine holistic perspective, everyone on here will, will see that, okay? So we're going to trace this word grace from the Old Testament to the New Testament. <clears throat> before we get started, well, actually, before we... Uh, 
get into that word etymology, we're going to have to go back and reestablish a few things because the title of this is Finding Grace in the Eyes of the Lord, Viewing the Process of the Fall, Separation, Division, and Version from a Divine Holistic Perspective. So we're going to have to add to that. We're going to have to augment our holistic abilities here. <clears throat> and in doing that, we want to look at something that we that we focused upon within the last few uh, teaching sessions that we did. And that is this term field of dominance, field of dominance. So what I'm saying is that even when we became Hebrew Israelites, that we were still under the conception of grace. We were still mm -hmm. under the influence of that idea, meaning from an energetic standpoint, we, re we, we remained under the same field of dominance. Understand this family, listen, simply changing your doctrinal position does not free you from an energetic field of dominance. Changing your name does not free you from an overarching energetic field of dominance. Saying you believe this and don't believe this anymore does not free you from an energetic field of dominance. If you do not recognize reality, whatever it is, from an energetic standpoint, there is no way that you can ascend out of what has dominated and influenced you in the past. No way. <clears throat> there is a science to this. You're not going to luck up on it. It is going to be something that you intend to do consciously and deliberately. It will not happen by mistake. A field of dominance, listen, is exhibited by high energy patterns in their influence over weaker ones. Now, when I speak of high energy patterns, I'm not talking about high frequency energy pattern. I am talking about, in this case, lower frequency energy patterns form in a hierarchy. The highest of the lower frequency energy patterns influencing the weaker ones. Did, did anyone not understand what I said? I'll make it clear because I have a listing of David Hawkins' hierarchy of energetic, emotional, um, frequencies of energy. So you see the lower ones below 200. <clears throat> they represent family. They represent what I what, what is termed as a field of dominance. Level 200 being the higher energy pattern or a higher energy frequency and all of the corresponding other lesser energy frequencies being influenced by this level. They are all lower frequency, but just arranged in a hierarchical 
pattern. That is what a field of dominance is. Are you all with me? Does everybody mm -hmm. understand that? I'm going to pause to make sure mm -hmm. you have that, that mental conception of what a field of dominance is. All right. Now, the other field of dominance is represented by the highest level of vibratory frequency, which is represented here by a thousand or 700 to a thousand. That is the highest, the higher uh, energy or the upper upper region or upper echelon of high energy and the weaker energy patterns falling in below that in a hierarchy. So you have 600, uh, 540, 500, and uh, to 250 and uh, 250 neutrality representing what? The lowest of the higher energy uh, field of dominance, the lower echelon of the higher field of dominance. Uh, it, that, that was kind of a clumsy uh, uh, articulation of that, but you all, you all get what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We got it perfectly. I, I got a little little map draw, drawn out, and it just shows, you know, like on a measuring cup, how you have those lines drawn on quarter go. cup, half cup, so that it 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 plays out in different, you know, a, a different way, but it's clear. It's clear, just like the hierarchy goes up. Very good. So we want to under we want to understand the lower uh, field, uh, the lower frequency field of dominance before we get to the higher one. In the apostasis of the Archons and other cosmological treatises, described how, uh, uh, describe how Yal de Baal emerges from the chaos of elementary matter due to the impact of the Ion Sophia in the waters below. We are all familiar with this allegorical narrative. The realm, the realm of the galactic arms outside of the galactic core, Pleroma. Sophia's plunge, listen, from the core, that's holism, produces an abortion or premature, hence flawed or defective birth in the elementary realms. The elementary realms are the physical and material realms what we've referred to as the false simulated matrix. Normally, life forms that appear in the star worlds of the galactic arms are emanated from the Pleroma, infused and informed by dis divine design before they manifest. But the archons produced by Sophia's impact arise without having been prefigured by the pleromic so-called gods, that is, worlds or energetic powers. We're all familiar that our emanation within the physical material realms was imperfect. Therefore, everything was reproduced according to that imperfect paradigm, that imperfect template, that imperfect pattern. It reflected it. And what I'm going to tell you is that it reflected it in a hierarchical, vertically integrated structure, whether, and, and more importantly, this hierarchical template or paradigm impacted us mentally mentally mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm still talking about grace now. I'm still, still talking about grace, but follow me. The abortion, that is birth defect, is a formless, malformed, defective, or incomplete mess, like a premature fetus with its organs incompletely formed, its faculties or intellect, memory, awareness, consciousness, stunted. In other words, it was hierarchical. It was hierarchical, trust me. As the goddess Sophia dreamed, it is said that she fell further into the void. And understand, we are the goddess Sophia that fell further into the void and awoke within a nightmare as our impact on the outer, outer veil, the waters below, led to the emergence of an inorganic, of, of inorganic elementals named archons, Yaldabaoth being supreme among them. So Yaldabaoth energetically would be anything that vibrates under uh, at 200 level 200 or below are you all with me okay and the archons are the represented by the lesser or weaker vibratory ranges that he rules over does it make sense family mm -hmm. all right this is we on the same page now The, so everything that is produced by that low frequency pattern or that low frequency paradigm or that low frequency uh, uh, template would perfectly, would be the perfect image of that. Whether it be thought or things, it would manifest in a hierarchical arrangement. Thus, family, the pecking order in nature. Mm -hmm. The strong over the weak. Mm -hmm. That is Yal the Baal and the Archons. That energetic pattern that creates what? An upper apex predators on the top and a lower lesser animals and lesser representations in a hierarchical pattern on the bottom george clinton asked the question why must i be like that why must i chase the cat nothing but the dog in me are you all with me? Mm -hmm. It is an energetic reality, <clears throat> an energetic characteristic, rather, I should say, that distinguishes the false reality. Everything in hierarchical structure, in dynamic opposition and action. Does it make sense? Okay. That is the pattern set by the energetic field of dominance. Field of dominance, low frequency dominance. The Gnostic texts say that the archon circled and swooned around the chaotic fields. That is that energetic interaction that dynamic interaction of one against the other in opposition, in competition, that is characteristic of the field of dominance that we have been under. And that these archons circling and swooning around the chaotic fields which were formed by Sophia's fall into 
the void or into her coma. This is us falling to the point where we are unconscious. We are unconscious. And we are just like leaves from an emotional, energetic standpoint, being blown by the wind, which is the, the field of dominance, the energetic field of dominance that we fell under in the lower realms. According to this myth, the world we inhabit is created through thought the region of matter made manifest and material things. It was the land of shadow and darkness, listen, a place where both perception and deception would coexist to form our reality, so-called reality. According to the Gnostic texts, Sophia eventually took physical form as Gaia, the original earth. Listen, the original earth. Mm -hmm. And her daughter was called Zoe, the imagination. See, this is all thought, family. This is all mental. While the Demiurge and the other archons, that is the field of dominance, that is the energetic field of dominance, lower frequency energy built their replica earth uh, built their replica earth matrix is what they called it and what we have termed it using other electromagnetic bodies known as planets and suns uh yadiel this is what this is what you and i are going to talk about later relative to that uh, David Icke uh, video that you sent me where he was talking about the old sun being Saturn. Okay. All right. This is what this okay. is referring to. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you how, exactly how, that they are manipulating truth and forming it into something that still deceives. All right. It, it purports, they purport to be showing us the way out of the matrix, but they are still using deception, still using deception. So this earth matrix or the replica is an illusory construct, whether we believe it's flat or otherwise. Understand, it don't matter what doctrine you choose to believe. The doctrine is not going to save you. Only mm -hmm. the understanding, a complete and absolute understanding of the energetic nature of your fall, uh, and and the only and the only way you're going to rise is to have that understanding, because once you know how you fall, you fail energetically. You can you can uh, do these the the proper things energetically to cause you to rise. Does it does it not make sense? Mm -hmm. Changing your doctrine is not going to do anything. It's just going to put you in further conflict with other people, flat earthers against the round right. earthers, mm -hmm. New Testament Hebrews and Christians against Old Testament Hebrews and Christians. Mm -hmm. Duality. Grace and, and people that believe, don't believe in grace, that believe in the law. Mm hmm it's vanity, and it is all part of the false reality, and therefore all part of the same field of dominance. You just dancing to different doctrines and yes. not going anywhere. While the Demiurge and the Archons built their replica, Earth Matrix, using other electromagnetic bodies known as planets and suns, an illusory construct, flat or otherwise, was made to what? To perfectly mimic, this is where deception came in, the original earth reality, 
And we're just not talking about the earth family in terms of minerals and soil and dirt and tree. And, and we're talking about the energetic nature of it. Mm -hmm. If we do not understand the energetic nature of it, then we don't. The earth is us. If, if yes. Sophia took the physical form as Gaia, the original earth, then Sophia is us and we are mm -hmm. the earth. But mm -hmm. No one, I don't care, no one held that doctrine. Nope. No one held that doctrine, Christians or Hebrews. If you're saying you did, you're being disingenuous. We have not understood the nature, the divine nature of our emanation. And we're being taught that now, that knowledge, that science is being perfected now. The Gnostics say that humanity is caught between two realities. The original earth, which is us, <laughs> once we have the proper conception of it, it, it represents us in our most physical and elemental form. And the one created out of the not uh, out of what the Noxic, Nox, Gnostic text called Hall, Hall, formed by its creator or its artisan, not its creator, its artisan, or its craftsman, the demiurge. Or God of Genesis, or the God of Genesis fame. Now, what it means is that this, in our fall family, the lower frequency, well, when we first emanated in, the organic earth, the true organic earth, which was less physical, listen, which was us in a less physical form was in supremacy. We had a perfect understanding and relationship with that. But as we fail progressively, these lower energy, this lower energy field of dominance began to grow and began to gain strength and gain supremacy. And that is where the inversion took place. When we fail below, at, we, we fail to the level of 200 and below. And then life began to be lived, not uh, 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 by and large, not according to the higher level field of dominance, but according to the lower level field of dominance. And it began to feed that particular field of dominance. It began to feed and strengthen that particular field of dominance so that those high energy patterns influenced us and dominated us no matter where we were energetically relative to our life experience. It was all low frequency. The word Yal the Baal. The word Yaldabea, remember, means Yaal, to gain or profit. Daba or Dabeo, from infirmity, illness, sickness, and particularly, family, the type of sickness or infirmity that affects a female in her menstruation cycle. It does not just affect her physically, but it affects her mentally and emotionally. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. And you, uh, those mental uh, thoughts, as I recall. Yep. That's, that's correct. Usually those mental thoughts are lower frequency and those emotions are lower frequency. And those things feed and fed the 
uh, the um, low frequency field of dominance. And so our ancestors created this narrative, created these characters. Sophia, Yaldabaoth, the Archons, to show us the different aspects of our fall within the physical realms. And not just in physical terms, but in energetic terms, which is the most important. So is everybody with me now? Okay. Okay. Okay, absolutely. So when we look at the hierarchy, all right, when we look at the, the hierarchy, that from a societal standpoint or a standpoint of civilizations that develop, everything had this image of the field of dominance that was becoming prevalent now, the lower frequency field of dominance. And it was characterized by higher energy patterns influencing weaker ones. So when we see this in a societal uh, hierarchical arrangement or one that is political or, uh, you know, uh, civilized uh, or, um, or even familial, it will have this pattern of a hierarchy. Follow me now. The pharaoh or the king at the top the high priest and the officials under the Pharaoh, the scribes, the artisans and the craftsmen, the farmers, laborers, servants, and the slaves. All right? So mm-hmm. that, is, that is a reflection of the image of the Demiurge or Yao de Baal or a low frequency field of dominance. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And that is how society has developed during the fall. It is always something at the top and something at the bottom, that arrangement. And usually someone at the top or something at the top and something at the bottom in decreasing order of strength or influence. So a hierarchy is a system or organization in which people or groups are ranked, what? One above the other, according to status, power, or or, or authority. Mm -hmm. Rank one above, but that is the pattern of the demiurge. That is is what is uh, a characteristic of any paradigm, that that is the paradigm that makes anything that is created from it, the thought, the template, to be ranked one above the other. So we go to the Genesis and we see this expressed. In the beginning, God created the heavens, that is the upper polarity of the um, of the demiurgic hierarchy and the earth, the lower, the, 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 the bottom most. That is what was being said here or what was being expressed here was a creation or an establishment of a vertically integrated hierarchical arrangement or scale. Anytime family, you see that reflected in anything in the earth, it reflects the field, the low frequency field of dominance. 
from whence it was created from. It is the image and likeness of Yah the Baal, or the Demiurge and the Archons, that particular field of dominance. Now I'm going to pause here for questions and comments. So we're going to take a look at this term grace now a little bit further and a little bit more in depth and in detail. I made the statement earlier, under the influence of deception, grace is grace. New Testament grace equals Old Testament grace. Old Testament grace equals New Testament grace. Therefore, Christian grace, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, is the same as Hebrew grace. And Hebrew grace is the same as Christian grace. And again, simply changing your doctrinal position does not remove you from the influence of the field of dominance that we were born into that we were all born into, whether Christians, whether Muslims, whether Buddhists, whether whatever you call yourself. <coughs> your, your doctrinal stance and merely changing doctrinal stances does not release you from the false simulated matrix. You have to attain that energetically because you are trapped energetically. Joel 1, verses 1 through 6. The word of the Lord came unto Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. All ye inhabitants of the land. Write the word land down because we're going to talk about entering into the promised land, entering into the land of Canaan. Very important. All of this is related to the word grace. I'm going to show you. Have this been in your days, even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. I'm going to show you that what he is what 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 is being talked about here through our ancestors. This has happened. What it is that they are going to talk about next has reached all of us, has influenced all of us, has been dominating each and every one of you on the phone. I don't care what you call yourself. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath, hath, uh, hath left, the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, the caterpillar eaten. We have all, each one of us, experienced this reality in our lifetime and mm -hmm. are continuing to experience this particular thing. I don't care what you call yourself, Christian, Hebrew, Muslim, Buddhist. This has been what has characterized you during this particular incarnation. This has characterized the our reality. Follow me now. This is the curse. Mm. This is the curse. Now, I don't care if your doctrine says that you are not under the curse. I'm going to show you that you are and that we have been. This is the curse of dualism. The curse of separation. The curse of the fall. Awake ye drunkards and, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because 
of the new wine, for it is cut out from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon what? My land. Not talking mm -hmm. about a geographical location here. Strong and without numbers, whose teeth are the teeth of a what? Mm. A lion. Mm -hmm. And he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. This is y'all the Baal. This is referring to the field of dominance that would overtake you and overtake your land. I'm not talking about a geographical location, family. You'll see this. It's going to be made perfectly clear because this is how the our ancestors encoded this for us for this particular time. Joel 2, verse 21 through verse 32. Fear not, O land. Now, why is he talking to the land like that and saying, don't fear? How can a land fear? Mm -hmm. Come on, Chase. Come on. Come on. Not talking about land like that. Bear with me. And be glad. Be glad. <laughs> Fear, low frequency vibrational emotion. Gladness, high frequency. Rejoicing, even higher. Joy. Right? Mm hmm. Y'all know this ain't talking about no, you know, no land, particular geographic location like that. For mm -hmm. the Lord will do great things. <clears throat> be not afraid. Still talking to the land. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. Now, remember, we said that this, uh, this field of dominance, listen very closely, was indicated even in nature, the hierarchical arrangement of nature. Follow me now, where you have the lion as the king of beasts, correct? Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's true or not, that's what we conceptualize, the lion being the king of beasts. And all of the other animals within the uh, jungle or in the field under the dominance of the lion, correct? Damn. And we said that that is a direct reflection of the field of dominance, which our ancestors allegorically referred to as Yal de Baal or the Demiurge, and that everything would reflect that was low frequency under that low frequency field of dominance, that everything would reflect it in that hierarchical structure and this dynamic swirling interaction and interplay between the small, the uh, weaker and the, the stronger uh, uh, elements reflected in the beast of the field, reflected in nature, all right? But see, we're going to reach a point family remember we covered this before where the lion and the wolf will do what lie down with the lamb <laughs> where the lion mm -hmm. would draw mm -hmm. like an ox correct mm -hmm. and there will be no more hurt or destruction in my holy mountain that refers to the end of the lower frequencies field of dominance over us and the transition into higher frequency field of dominance and that ascension process. Does it make sense? Absolutely. All right. So be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fr fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Talking to you all the time. <laughs> okay. 
and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you, now it says, the former rain moderately. Don't say that. But it, when you decode that, it says, for he hath given you the teacher of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Don't look at me. Don't look at Nasik. Don't look at nobody. The teacher of righteousness is within you. Mm -hmm. No matter what I say, if that teacher of righteousness within you, no matter what Nasik and, and me say, if that teacher of righteousness is not awakened in you, you're not going to be able to make heads nor tails of what we're talking about. Okay. This is just how this thing is arranged temporarily. Where you have someone teaching you. Watch this, family. See, there are other individuals that are waking up at this time and whose job is to wake up others at this time that have this understanding as well. And this is why I have queued up uh, Seven Bomar again, because he's going to address in this brief portion everything that I've said uh, relative to this teacher of righteousness. Now watch. It says the following clip was taken from ambassador training. This information will be life changing. Listen responsibly to enroll. Check the link in the description. Now, this is something that Seven Bomar did on the 29th of last month, July 29th. Now, you remember on the 27th was the mm -hmm. Blood moon eclipse. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is connected to everything that we're doing, family. Mm -hmm. Listen very carefully regarding this hierarchical arrangement of teaching structure and what he says about it. Um. Let me just go into this with the gloves off because there's always something, right? Like with the end, it must be the yang, right? And actually what I'm going to reveal today is how to break that cycle because it's, it's getting... How to break this cycle of dualism, yin and yang, all right? Mm -hmm. Yin and yang, upper and lower, this cycle of dualism, this dynamic interaction of opposites, of polarities, of higher versus lower, stronger versus weaker. It, um, it's getting a bit boring and it's just because sometimes we're engaged in such a hyperdimensional aspect of our creation we don't even know what we're doing like if you think about how people move throughout the day and how most of us move if we don't have a real blueprint it's like okay what am I going to do today there's no real purpose like okay what our ancestors are doing for us family is giving us a blueprint they are putting this in our hands this is what I do. This is what I'm working towards. This is how I'm going to get there. This is why I'm going to get there. So these are the, the questions that we will look for our spiritual instructors and our, our gurus, our leaders, our mentors. Teachers of righteousness, externalized. Mm -hmm. Internalized. I'm telling you the teacher of righteousness spoken here is in you all, is being activated is the one that is actually teaching you or whatever the answer and what happens is is that you know i've always still seen myself as young now that i'm getting older and like i'm about to hit 40 here so now i guess i'm going to eventually get to the point where i'm going to be the elder that's giving the information because i was looking to the elders and looking to the information that was out there to get me uh acclimated to what i was experiencing in this grand climb uh up to my ascent Right? Isn't that what we were all doing? Yes. And what we are all Dang. continuing and what we are all continuing to do to a certain extent. Listen very carefully, family. So whether that's 
again, you got information from secret societies. You have old books about, you know, magical powers from ancestors. You got witchcraft and warlocks and voodoo. And you have all these different systems that proclaim to actually understand how to work the machinations of this existence and get you to where whatever you desire, you receive. That's the whole point of this. Your will being done in earth as it is in heaven, family. Is everyone with me? Okay. okay. That's the whole height of magic is when you want something, you can just have it when you want it, right? And so that's why things like the laws of attraction and the manifestation laws and all these things become so instrumental these days for um for people to have that's why people are gravitating towards that because they're like oh you know, if i can find a way to to manifest whatever i want then that's what i want right and then never asking themselves the question what do you really want because if you were in front of someone that can answer all questions but you just needed to present the question what question would you really ask and would the question or would the answer that you get take you to another level or would it just lead you into another question okay so with that being asked i would first address let's say for instance uh if i got to ask something that had answers to everything the first question i would ask it is how could i operate like how could i do things that in in a way that it will always be in my favor always be in my favor always be in my favor mm -hmm. Family, the word grace is another word for favor. Mm. See, let me finish this out. Be glad, ye children of, of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. I'm going to break that down for you all Hebraically and show you that it is that the former rain moderately come on now it's called the teacher it's it's really literally translated as the teacher of righteousness the former rain moderately and he come on you know they mm -hmm. mistranslated that mm -hmm. it's the for he have given you the teacher of righteousness and he will cause to come down for you the rain the form how is the former rain moderately going to cause to that don't make no sense right right it's the teacher of righteousness for he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month we're going to decode that later on, family. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. That is a time of prosperity that is going to be brought about by you teaching yourself things you have formerly known and putting them into practice. Are you all with me? Absolutely. And I will look, look at this word, restore to you. We took a look at this word, or David took it, took a look at this word, I believe it was David, though David, uh, remember. Remember, mm -hmm. remind, recollect, restore, resurrect. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. It's somewhere where you've been before. <laughs> something that you've had before. How I'm going to restore something to you and you never had. It. Right. How you going how I'm going to re cause you to remember something and you were never whole. <laughs> how, how I'm going you going to recollect something 
and it's something that was never collected in the first place. And I will restore to you, look, the years that the locusts have eaten, mm -hmm. the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and the great army which I sent among you. That great army is y'all the Baal and the Archons. It is that field of dominance that have has influenced you in the weaker aspects, energetically speaking, of your fall and descent. Yes, indeed, you, we were cursed. We cursed ourselves. Eta. Yes, sir. What where we went? Joel, what 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 what's what verses? Joel 21 and we're in verse 25 now. But wait a minute, going, Joel or Job? Uh Job, yes, Job. I'm sorry. Job. The second chapter. J-O-E-L. Yes. Uh the second chapter, verses 21 through 32. We're on verse 25 right now. Okay, all right. This is the curse, family. If you're taking notes, write down the word curse. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name, Yahuwah, your God, that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, the lower individuals, in the hierarchical spectrum, <laughs> destroying this hierarchy. Children, destroying the difference between young men and old men, daughters and fathers, daughters and mothers, sons and mothers. And upon the servants and the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in heaven in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. Is this all, I mean, let's just press pause. Are we seeing these wonders in the heavens, family? And mm -hmm. did, we see, did we see the full blood moon? Mm -hmm. Are we seeing fire yes. and pillars of mm -hmm. smoke out on yes. the earth? Yes. yes. Come on now. Yes, definitely. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. That happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. That happened mm -hmm. before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. It's here, family. It's here. Yes, it is. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, see, we 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 talked about this in religious terms. Tell mm -hmm. me I'm not. We just said, we told people, stop saying God and stop saying Lord and say Yahweh and you'll be saved. Tell me right. that's not what we said. Okay, so. oh, that's not what we was doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. We thought that a change in doctrine and a change right. in what you say out your mouth can affect the profound energetic condition that you put yourself in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it's either true or it's not true. It's true, shows because we see the manifestation of that. You see it. Mm -hmm. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. We're not talking about family 
physical or geographical locations. Yes. As the Lord hath said, and the remnant, and in the remnant who shall who whom the Lord shall call. Let me tell you all something. I've said this over and over again. Many are called, few are chosen. You chose yourself to be where you're at right now. Yes. Yes. I'm just saying things. Same thing. We're just saying things in order to put you in remembrance, in order to wake up that teacher of righteousness that is within you. And it is being evident. It's evident. You all know that that is being awakened within you. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you. Surely our fathers have inherited lies. All of our fathers have inherited lies. Vanity and things when, wherein there is no profit. That word profit is Yaal in Yaal the Baal. But we're going to use this now. This We're going to take a look at what Jeremiah is saying here to understand, now see, that ain't no way with the information that we had and the way we were using it could we affect our salvation and our deliverance from this profound and powerful energetic field of dominance that we chose to incarnate, uh, incarnate into. There's no way. There was no That's Jeremiah 16, 19. Jeremiah 16 and 19. There was no way it could profit us. The only things that we were doing, Hebrew or Christian, Muslim or Buddhist, was strengthening the energetic field of dominance upon uh, 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 that had influence over us. Nothing that we did, nothing. That's absolutely correct. Freed us from that. We're going to have to redeem the time, family. We're going to have to, first of all, walk in wisdom. This is Colossians 4 and 5, and then Ephesians 5 and 16. I combine them because they're saying similar things. We're going to have to walk in wisdom. Wisdom, uh, the wisdom, family, of that inner teacher of righteousness that is within us all toward them that are without, redeeming the time for the days are evil, for the days are evil. When we talk about evil, we're talking about, and when they talk about the days, it's talking about the age, and evil family is dualistic, extremely, profoundly dualistic, profoundly dualistic. As represented by the image, Nasi, with the iron legs, mm -hmm. right, and the feet of miry clay, right. Uh, bear with me, family. So we have to redeem the time, redeem the time. Now, we're looking at these energy, emotional or consciousness levels as outlined by David Hawkins. And the ancestors have indicated to us recently that we must maintain a steady level of vibrational frequency, of consciousness, of high frequency emotions that are 250 of, uh, or above up to 350. And 350 being the highest level of this, and it is what? Acceptance, okay? We go from neutrality to willingness to acceptance. Write down the word acceptance. 
Next to that, write down the word favor. Next to that, write down the word grace. Well, well acceptance. What was the other one? Favor. The word that uh, that seven Beaumont. And then grace. And then grace. Uh huh. Now we went over this, and 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 we read uh, what David Hawkins said about each of these uh, three topics, each of these three levels, and we should be studying those things on a regular basis and have a full understanding of what it is that we need to do relative to our behavior, relative to our thoughts, relative to our emotional uh, states to remain within that 250, 350 range. Hawkins says, and I quote, on our scale of consciousness, there are two critical points that allow for major advancement. We've qualified for that, Nasi. Yes, sir. We've qualified, family, for this major advancement. Mm -hmm. The first is at 200, the initial level of empowerment. We're, we're past that, the initial yeah. level of empowerment. Here, the willingness, listen, family, listen very closely. The willingness to stop blaming and accept responsibility for one's own actions, feelings, and beliefs arises. So we've done that. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you how. We're not blaming nobody for our fault. No, no question. No. We know that this is something that we volunteered for. We know that this was something that was planned out in the most intricate detail and that was watched over mm -hmm. throughout the generations. It was a controlled devolution, a controlled mm -hmm. descent, a controlled fall and inversion family we're not blaming nobody else mm -mm. but I bet, That's right. I bet people in a hierarchical structure doggone true are they're continuing to blame others look at the, yeah. post, mm. the, the post on the on facebook all these con conspiracy theories mm -hmm. that arise it's the Illuminati. It's the white man. It's this. It's that. But me, I know my ancestors have done it. I'm at a level of neutrality. I don't get yes. emotional. I don't get emotional about that. I'm compassionate for those right. individuals right. Right. that mm -hmm. remain in that. Mm -hmm. But I don't buy into, I'm I'm not buying into, I'm not lowering myself to those low frequency emotions yes and thoughts our answer my response to that look whatever our ancestors they did that i'm not that's right go go right ahead my response is the ancestors did it here the willingness to stop blaming and accept responsibility for one's own act. See, even David Hawkins doesn't fully understand this. To the level that we do. We know we emanated in here. We know that our ancestors are in control from beginning, from the beginning of this process up until now. And they will remain under control. As long as cause and responsibility are what? Projected outside oneself. Mm -hmm. One will remain powerless in the mode of victimhood. Christians are, are powerless. They are under the mode of victimhood. 
Mm -hmm. Hebrew, Israelites, Hebrew Israelites are powerless. Yes. Because they remain, they remain in the mode of victim. Yes. Yahuwah hey, did. Dad, why are you reading? You, you read it from Power Versus Force? I'm, no, I'm reading from this article. Th this is in Power Versus Force. But, uh, and this is David R. Hawkins, but I don't know where it is. I'm reading from an article that exerted it. Okay. But you'll, you'll get this. You'll get this. Everyone will get it. Don't worry. So our scale on, on our scale of consciousness, there are two critical points that allow for major advances. The first one is taking full responsibility of your predicament. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Christians have not done it. No one in the Ju uh, under the Judeo-Christian template or paradigm has done it, including Hebrew Israelites. They remain victims and stuck in the initial level of empowerment, which is level 200. The second level, family, is the, le is, is the 500 level, which is reached by what? Accepting love and non-judgmental forgive, forgiveness as a lifestyle, not just as a doctrine, as a right. lifestyle. Family, the Come first on. part of that, the acceptance of love has to do with your heart chakra. Yes. Mm -hmm. being, mm -hmm. being activated. Yes. Under this shift, y'all and felt y'all felt like y'all was having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> For three days now. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Didn't know what was going on. That's just your heart chakra coming in coming online. Yes. Active get where it needs to be in it from mm -hmm. an energetic standpoint. And family, a non-judgmental forgiveness as a lifestyle. Non-judgmental forgiveness is grace. Yes. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. But we we are conceptualizing it just as a doctrine now. But it must become our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It must become Damn. our lifestyle. So let's define it. I know that David R. Hawkins is defining it here, but from more of humanistic terms. But we have to see this, and I'm going to show you, through divine eyes and a divine perspective. And he goes on to say, exercising unconditional kindness, that is grace, to all persons, things, events, without exception. Now, this is, you know, this humanistic viewpoint. Remember, they view things, family, from the bottom up. Yes. They are created. They are just custodians of this information. We are the authors of this information, of this science. This is what we left ourselves, the breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm to show us the way back. So we can't simply look at this from humanistic terms, social terms. We have to look at it from a top-down perspective, from divine eyes. So this is what the term means, finding grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's your divine eyes, viewing the process of the fall separation, division, inversion from a divine holistic perspective, not from a humanistic perspective. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing a human wants to do. Once they learn something, make it benefit their humanity or other humans. We got to stop that. If we focus on the energetic aspect, I'm telling you, everything 
that falls under our influence will be treated properly. Yes. These two thresholds are primary challenges for individuals today. Moving beyond them represents a significant barrier. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. A significant barrier, which can only be overcome through a significant shift in personality. That's what we're going through. That's what we are talking about. This shift from human thought and perception to what? Divine thought and perception. After moving beyond these two realms, listen, progression into increasingly higher realms or higher states is very natural and yet and less challenging. You remember, I said that the what characterizes the lower frequency field of attraction is that the frequencies tend to weaken under the higher field. And we become what? Prone to fall, prone to stay down, prone to stay locked within those uh, lower frequency realms. Conversely, and again, it's reflected in what uh, is being uh, stated here, that once you re once you go beyond this barrier, once you, once you enter into and stabilize at higher frequencies, our ancestors said between 250 and 350, and we begin to break through and beyond these particular realms, progression into increasingly higher states is the tendency. We become more prone to do that, and it becomes less challenging. Are you all with me? Okay. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Look, not of works, lest any mm. human can boast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it is something that you have inside of you. But Noah found grace where? In the eyes of the Lord. Let's look at that word grace, family. And this is going to indicate what the ancestors are saying to us now. As we enter, family, into, as we seek, rather, to enter into this Lion's Gate portal. The word, you know what the word grace is in Hebrew? It's the word Cain. Yes, we've been granted permission. Yes. <laughs> we've been granted permission. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cain, enter in. Enter in. That's why yeah. I woke up looking at grace. Let me break it down for you all. Cain, you can enter in. Cain, you found favor. <laughs> not going to do it through works, trying to be good, trying to be right. good boys and girls. You're going to do it by, by addressing the energetic nature of your reality. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. The word grace, 2580 is the word came, meaning favor, <laughs> grace, and acceptance. Right. Right. They're showing us yes. that there's a potential to reach this level of acceptance, family. Critical level. Mm -hmm. Critical level, the doorway into higher realms. 
love, joy, peace, enlightenment, etc. Eat that. That uh, scripture in Ephesians was what? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. 2, 8 and 9. Okay. It's the word. Now that's pretty profound in what you just mentioned about everybody, every almost everything in the Hebrew. You know, when someone asks you a question, it's either Cain or low. Yeah. In most cases. That's correct. But you never connected Cain to grace in no kind of way. That's correct. Wow. <laughs> now see, this is it's gonna it's gonna get wilder. It's gonna get wilder, <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh Big Dad, before you go any further, uh tell Doe David if he can hear me. If he can't, he, he got to, he got to take this number and call me because I got a message for him. Though, if you're on and you heard that, let us know at this point. I hear. I hear. Everything. Okay. Very good. Okay. Tell him to take this number down. Uh, take this. I can hear you, Nasik. I hear you, Nasik. I hear you. Go, go right ahead. Okay. One second. The number is 404. Uh, hold on. So, again, in Hebrew, the word grace is the word Cain. The word Cain, all right? Meaning favor, grace, and acceptance. I told you to write those words down. Favor, grace, and acceptance. And it's 2580. And it is from 2603. And it's the word Kanan. Kanan. Bear with me, family. If you know your Bible, you'll know that this word is similar to the word Canaan, as in the land of Canaan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Follow me now. It's Come on, sir. Root, and it says compare to 2583. Properly, look, to bend or stoop in kindness to an inferior. Now, in a, the only way that you can do this is within a hierarchical structure. Right. But understand this. This was our mental conception. The Christian understanding of grace was the same as the Hebraic understanding or conception or doctrine of grace. That God being superior would bend down or stoop down to show us as inferior beings kindness mm -hmm. the hebrew israelites in their history had this concept of grace relative to entering into the land that they had to that in order for them to do anything and to be restored god would have to bend down and stoop down and show them kindness as, as as an inferior. Tell me that's not true. Mm -hmm. Tell me that's not why you pray. Come on, sir. Tell me that's not why you dress like you dress. Tell me that's mm -hmm. not why you eat what you eat. Mm -hmm. Don't eat what you tell mm -hmm. me that is not why you set that 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 you uh celebrate the Shabbat. Mm-hmm every week.
Tell me that's not why you go why we mm -hmm. was going to all these Kagin. Yes. So mm -hmm. in order for us, for a superior God to bend down and stoop down and to show us the inferior under a hierarchical scale or structure, some type of kindness. Tell mm -hmm. me that's not the truth. Come on, shows. Real talk. Every bit of the truth. It means to implore. That is to beg, to cry out, to pray, to move someone to show you favor by petition. Tell me that's not the mindset. Come on, show. Dominates. If it is. It is showing you that you are still under the influence of low frequency, energetic field of dominance. There is no ascension in that. I don't care how many of y'all pray at the same time. Right. I don't care what the attendance was, how many observed Shabbat. I don't care. It, it, you're still under a low, the influence of under a low frequency field of dominance. It's hierarchical. It's hierarchical thinking. It's a hierarchical perspective. And it is, Nasi, profoundly dualistic. Mm -hmm. Profoundly dualistic and double-minded yes. think not that you're going to receive anything but the same thing that you've been receiving and that is look and and, and tell me it's not true that the palmer worm uh that which the palmer worm have left the locust have eaten that the locust have left the canker worm yeah. has that the canker worm had left, that the caterpillar had he Show me your inheritance. Right. Come on, shows. Show me prosperity. Mm -hmm. Show me abundance. Show me the divine life of plenty and abundance that's supposed to be yours. Show me Canaan land. Show me the land of milk and honey relative <laughs> to your life experience. Come on, shows. The challenge is to Christians too, Muslims too, worldwide, mm -hmm. anyone under that field of dominance. Mm -hmm. They find themselves in one place, under the 1% that dominate all the resources. Yes. That dominate all the wealth, that call all the shots. Am I am I lying? Am I taking things out of context? I'm telling the whole truth. Absolutely not. <laughs> Exposing <laughs> so true. So true. Anytime you are entreating or imploring or begging someone, making supplication to someone or something to have mercy upon you, to have pity upon you, to show you some favor, you are showing the characteristic of someone that is still to one degree or the other under the domination, under the influence of a field of a low frequency field of dominance. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Genesis nine as we begin to close this this out, family. We'll pause here uh, briefly. I'm going to ask are there any questions or comments at this point.
So in the Hebrew, grace means favor. Uh, you know, it, it's it's translated as the word Cain. Okay, Cain. Yes, it means grace, favor, or acceptance. Like your request has been accepted. Your request has been accepted. You've been granted favor. You've been granted grace, kindness. You've been well favored. All right. And it is a very positive term. But we're going to show how in the fall, grace was inverted. Grace was inverted. And we're going to see from a etymological standpoint that Cain became Canaan. Cain mm -hmm. became Canaan. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, you, you all recall now that who was the good brother, Cain or Abel? Abel. <laughs> that, that's what they said, but that, that's the way, that, you know, that's what we had learned because I, I, I he was the one that got sacrificed. <laughs> I, uh, I just want inversion. us to focus on the inversion on process. The inversion. Absolutely. It was inversion. From an, from an etymological, from standpoint. etymological standpoint. Now, now the land of Cain. Land of The, the, and the Canaanites were viewed from a biblical standpoint as enemies. We're getting an echo from somewhere. Hold on. Okay, I think I got it. But even the land of Canaan and the Canaanites were viewed as enemies. Is that not so from a religious standpoint, from a biblical standpoint, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to learn from just by viewing the etym etymology of this word Cain, which is, you know, a very positive word to how this thing was flipped and inverted. All right. In Genesis 9. We're going to read verses 17 through 19 and then skip down and read verses 20 through through 27. And God said unto Noah, this is the token. Look, the token of the covenant. So again, I said that Nasik is going to deal uh, with this idea of covenant and he's going to give a. Uh, more in-depth uh, rendering of these covenants and their their meaning in terms of uh, this ascension process, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the face of the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem, Chem, or Ham, Ham, and Yafet. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Now, why did our ancestors put that in? <laughs> they didn't mention mm -hmm. no other sons, but they mm -hmm. mentioned that Ham it was the father of Canaan or Canaan. All right? Because that, that, that's what we're, we're supposed to be connected to as a people, right? To Ham? Here, here, here we go. That's the lie they told about the No, it's anyway, not a lie. It's, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. Oh, the it's curse? Lie. Okay. It, it's not a lie. Our ancestors did this. See, when, when we say lie, family, we think that, we, that we're, we're taking the position of a victim. We have to look mm -hmm. at this from holistic terms. Mm -hmm. we are, look, family, we are redeeming the time. We are redeeming the time. Why? Yes. Because the days are evil. 
Mm -hmm. I think we are in a profoundly dualistic, we find ourselves waking up, incarnating within a profoundly dualistic environment where it is vertically integrated in a hierarchical system. We have to look at this through divine, holistic eyes. We have to find grace in the eyes of our divinity, in the eyes of the Lord. Ham is mentioned purposefully by our ancestors because they wanted us to, to unpack this at this point. When we reach this point of consciousness, what no lie, it was understood as a lie from a dualistic standpoint, but from a holistic standpoint, we see the ancestors working. Mm -hmm. We see them laying the groundwork that is going to lead us back to hold it to, to wholeness. These I got are, it, teach. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole world overspread was the whole world overspread. And we know the story, and this is what uh, Ms. Ura was alluding to, that Noah got drunk and he fell out naked mm -hmm. in his tent. And we pick up the story here. And Ham, and they again, they gonna make you understand what this is, who this is, the father of Canaan. Now remember, the word Canaan is phonetically, if not etymologically, linked to the word Cain. Mm -hmm. Cain, just like in Cain and Abel, Cain, yes, mm -hmm. as opposed to low, Cain, grace, all right, approval. We're showing the inversion process. This was purposeful, intentional, and it was done with a profound amount of wisdom. We're putting it on view here. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and, and told his two brothers without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the, na the nakedness of their fathers and their faces were backward. Why do they keep why do they keep reminding us that their faces were backwards? Mm -hmm. And they saw not the nakedness of their father. There is something profound in this. Something very profound. We won't uh, get distracted by it now. We'll return to it. I just want us to understand this and see this with new eyes, with our divine eyes now. And Noah woke up from his wine and knew that his, what his younger son had done unto him. And how he knew that, we don't know. And he said, cursed be Canaan or Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. Now we wanna say this is a lie. We wanna say it's false. But is that not our experience? Mm -hmm. Right on. <laughs> is our experience, family, not characterized by that which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and yes. that which the locust hath eaten, the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath, e hath left, the caterpillar has eaten? Mm -hmm. That Bottom. characterizes us in a separate, disconnected, profoundly dualistic position. If I'm lying, show me that I'm wrong. E Ita, yeah. could, could, it be, could it be said that their faces were backwards because they were inverted? Let, let's let's not get distracted. I want us to... Okay. If we're not going to get distracted, on, we're going to come back to that. But I want us to stay on this track. Mm -hmm. 
are we have we not been servants of servants yes can you show can can yes absolutely yes so they were not lying mm -hmm. this has been our life experience in these generations and he said bless be uh the lord see it's only if if the only way from a from a position of victimhood. Well, the white folks put that in the Bible. The man, no, but that but haven't you been a servant of servants? Yes. Is that not whether the white folks put it in there or not? Right. Has that not been the case? We have been servants of servants. That that's mm -hmm. just like that's just like saying uh well the Willie Lynch letter is not is not uh an actual doc, but has that stuff not happened? Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Why are we exactly. arguing about the fact that it, that is it is a fictional doc? It's a good fiction if it's a fiction mm -hmm. because it mirrors or reflects our experience. Yes. To the T, we have been these servants of servants. I have to acknowledge what's real, the truth. And family, the reason being is because we are in a profoundly hierarchical system mm -hmm. we emanated into i'm sorry we uh incarnated into a, a profoundly hierarchical uh, environment dualistic environment and we've been servants two servants yes <laughs> in this inversion and he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall, show me where we've been enlarged. <laughs> show me where God has been with us. This has been our experience. And it has been profound because it is indicating that we would find ourselves, that we would incarnate into a time where a low frequency field of dominance would be at its uttermost supremacy. And we would be at the very bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Remember, a field of dominance is exist is exhibited rather by higher frequency patterns of low frequency energy and their influence over weaker ones. And it manifests itself societally, economically culturally in a hierarchical pattern the few at the top and the many at the bottom mm -hmm. has that not been our, our experience since we've been okay. here? it also family manifests itself in this structure from, mm -hmm. uh, from a familial standpoint that both Christians, Muslims, any religious person <clears throat> whose mindset is hierarchical, whose mentality is hierarchical, they will set their family in this structure. God above, husband beneath God, wife mm -hmm. beneath husband, children mm -hmm. beneath the wife and mm -hmm. call that divine order. Let me right. ask any Hebrews yeah. mm -hmm. have any other idea that the family should be structured in any other way. No. Mm -mm. This is something that we accept it to be true. Yes. And it is Thanks. further evidence. It is further evidence that you are profoundly trapped 
under the influence of low frequency field of dominance. Mm -hmm. The word Canaan means low land. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was our ancestors saying that you would be trapped in the lowlands mm -hmm. when you incarnated into this particular generation that we all chose to be incarnated into. Ain't nobody lied to us. That was the truth. Mm -hmm. You are, you did, you became, you incarnated as Canaan, cursed Canaan. And everything you did under the influence of that profound, low frequency, energetic field of dominance reflected low frequency, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust. If, if that's not your experience, let me know then you are an accepted exception to this rule. But as a people, we were trapped in the lowlands, which is the absolute lowest level or sphere of the hierarchical scale. Mm -hmm. In order to show me where so-called black people were not under there, you have to go back to the silver and golden ages. Yes. Which was when we first began uh, this fall process. We were not entrenched into it. It was prior to the utter influence of this low frequency field of dominance. Does it make sense, fam? Can it show us? Mm -hmm. So we show these hierarchical structures here. Uh, where we were, it was upright. It was upright in the golden age. It was upright in the golden age. Then it inverted and fell. Then it further fell. Mm -hmm. And in the kingdom age now, Malkuth, the mixture where the feet and the clay, the miry clay, were, were in profound separation. Mm -hmm. Alkut is king. That's the kingdom age where everything mm -hmm. was structured hierarchically. All our institutions, whether under Christianity or whether under Hebrewism or whether under Islam, were arranged in this hierarchical structure. Everything that we could produce was based upon this template, even the family structure. Yes. That is evidence that you are still under a particular low frequency field of dominance. I don't care what you call your God. Yahuwah, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Allah, Buddha, it is still Yal de Baal. Mm -hmm. The higher end, dominating, lower frequency emotions, lower frequency energies, lower frequency levels of consciousness. Under that influence, you will never rise. Why? Because the tendency is paradoxical. The tendency is to remain at those lower frequency, to remain in your lane and to go lower, not higher. Is that not the case, family? Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> annulling the curse of Canaan and entering into the land of Canaan, the promised land. This is not a geographical location. <laughs> mm hmm unless you can tell me how, I mean, in real terms, you, in real science, how moving from one place to, to another 
changes your energetic nature. Tell me nope. in real terms, in scientific terms, and how it freed you. Give me your personal <laughs> testimony. Can't do it. I'll wait. <laughs> Come on, show. According to this myth, the world we inhabit is created through thought, the region of matter made manifest and material things. It was the land of shadow and darkness, the lowlands, Canaan, mm -hmm. the land of Canaan, a place where perception, both perception and deception would coexist to form our reality. That is exactly what happened. Yes. In Genesis 23 and 20, it says, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That is the promised land. That is the promised land. And the Lord said unto Moses, depart and go up hence, thou and the people, which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swore unto Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying unto thy seed will I give it. This is not referring to a geographical location. Because mm -hmm. this is an allegory that our ancestors made up to show us the energetic nature of our fall and the energetic nature of our rise. <clears throat> and I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, mm -hmm. the lowlanders, and the lowland, low frequency energy from you. You are the land mm -hmm. unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will go, I will not go up in the midst of thee. For thou art a stiff necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> That's talking about that energetic shit. Y'all don't want y'all don't want that full energy. <laughs> Not in the condition that we're in mentally and physically mm -hmm. and energetically. We can't have that full burst. So we get it in increments, in bite size, in bite sized pieces, in stuff that we can, in ways we can ingest it and digest it and, and accept it. So the word Kanaan or Canaan means lowland, that is the absolute lowest level and sphere of, uh, of the hierarchical scale. And uh, also that word means humiliated, and that means to humble oneself, all right? Canaan, mm -hmm. the son of Ham, also the country inhabited by him, and Ham, fam, is Kim, Kim. And we get the word Kemet. Kemet, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it means uh, merchant or trafficker. Uh, so we look at this center uh, circle here and <clears throat> look at the, the process of emanating from the non-physical realms of divinity and wholeness and rest into the dynamic um, realms of the material, physical, into duality, and finally into physicality, into the earth realm or the Malkuth realm as represented here, the lower levels, the earth, the lowlands, the lower levels of the mixture, as they say, or the the profoundly dualistic realms of existence, profoundly separated from divinity. Hierarchy, listen, as we close, is, an in, is integral to the nature of the emanation, process, separation, fall, and inversion of divine being. 
hierarchy is an it's integral to it. For the ancients, that's our ancestors, social hierarchy provided a concrete image and reminder of the true ont ontological hierarchy, the great chain of being. Uh, Malkiel said that is why the ancestors that those pyramids are a reminder in their structure of our true ontological hierarchical uh, state. It reflects our emanation. It explains our emanation to a great degree. It shows how a thing, our divinity, became many things. Are you all with me? And it is a perfect, concrete reflection of anything that is created on the physical or material or mental realms within the matrix. And we see the, the, the pyramid of how kingdoms in the ancient times were structured. That is uh, the pyramid on the left and on the right, how modern society is structured under the social technological uh, at the highest point and the uh, uh, physical on the lowest point. As we close out, family, the account of the levels of being which separate the creator, that is our higher self, our divinity, from material universe, the lower self, our humanity, while at the same time uniting them, is similar in all the revealed traditions and in the works of many mystical philosophers, but it is never identical. This is why we have to use so many uh, different um, uh, allegories, so many different cre creation narratives from so many different cultures at so many different times and integrate them into and attempt to integrate them to the best of our abilities and syncretize them into a whole, into one thing again. But it is never identical, since whatever can be made explicit has already entered the world of relativity. This is the difficulty that we have in putting these classes together sometimes and expressing these things in absolute holistic terms. Very difficult tightrope to walk. True metaphysical doctrines are vastly more stable, articulate, intelligible, and concrete than anything in the material and physical and, and psychic worlds. But even though the absolute emanates them, they cannot obtain the absolute. They can only indicate it. And this is what we're saying. Look, the teacher of righteousness is in you all. Now, Seek and I, under this format, are only attempting to activate that which you already know. And again, it's a it's it's problematic because we are in the world, we exist in the world of relativ uh, relativity and dualism. And we're trying to, we're attempting to, to use and convert dualistic language to express something that is absolute, something that is holistic. That's our challenge. But it is being done through the assistance of the ancestors. 
being manifested on different levels, but it also appears in terms of different qualities occupying the same level. Different qualities occupying the same levels. And this is different qualities that are created by dualism. and separation. Levels are vertical. Uh, levels are vertical. Each higher level is the cause of the levels below it. And it contains all that is in these lower levels in a higher form. This is what we just explained as a low frequency field of dominance. Likewise, each lower level is a manifestation or expression that is a symbol of all that is above it. That is Yaldabaoth and the Archons in the Gnostic narratives of all that is above it. In Rene Gagnon's words, the effect is a symbol of the cause. So we say it like, like causes produce like effects. So if the effect is, a, is from the upper echelon of lower frequencies, everything that is below it is influenced by it and will reflect in the image of that particular symbol or template or paradigm. <clears throat> Modes of being, on the other hand, are horizontal, not vertical. They differ in quality and function, but not in degree of reality. They are mutually defining, polarized manifestations of a single level of being. This is very profound. Mm -hmm. The distinction between modes and levels can be illustrated in the realm of gender, male and female family, male and female. When you get this, please study it because this is profound and this will open up our, help to open up our divine eyes. In vertical terms, man, in vertical terms, rather, <clears throat> man considered as a reflection of the creative logos is higher than woman. Considered as a reflection of universal receptive substance, universal receptive substance. Viewed from the opposite perspective, however, woman, when taken as a symbol of the divine essence, <clears throat> excuse me, or divine being, is higher than man. Well, what is true? They are both true. <clears throat> they are both true. But in horizontal terms, man and woman are polarized as complementary. Mm -hmm. opposites, not in opposition complementary opposites on the same level of being. Mm -hmm. The right hand is not more real than the left hand. Because why? They are complementary. They are equal. But equality family in this sense has nothing to do with sameness or identity. The right hand still maintains its symbolic connection 
with the higher realms of being, with truth and right or righteousness, while the left or sinister hand remain, retains its affinity with the lower realms. This is why the <clears throat> symbol, speaking of symbols, of the triangle with the point upward and the base low, lower had to flip. Mm -hmm. Had to flip and then fall even lower for us to have began the ascension up. And we have to incorporate what? The feminine aspect. Yes in order to ascend if you and again if you have a structure <clears throat> that remains patriarchal exclusively you'll never rise never you got a pope at the top and no woman a king right. at the top and no woman mm -hmm. no feminine, feminine aspect leaders at the very top all represented by the masculine element, you'll never rise. Never, never rise. It does not reflect energetically what you need to incorporate, <clears throat> empower, and energize the rise. On the other, <clears throat> on the other hand, pun deliberately intended. The right hand is also connected with the outer consciousness ego and the left hand with the inner truth as Jesus implied when he recommended that in charity, one should not let the right hand conscious ego know what his left hand inner spiritual impulse is doing. This is why we use the sigils family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So we don't want the right hand, the upper consciousness or what conscious awareness know what, what the id or the inner spiritual impulse or energetic uh, signature, the energetic reservoir rather is doing. He says, no, whoever meditates on the famous yin yang sign will see in it a visual a visual representation of this paragraph but this is the thing that um, uh, seven Bomar in the brief video excerpt said that has become what boring this yin yang thing that we must what excel above that so in closing, family, finally, the so-called promised land or land of Canaan is not a physical, material, geographic, earthly location at all. The promised land or land of Canaan refers to what we transition into and possess energetically when we gain an absolute, complete, and comprehensive understanding, holistic thought, perception of the true nature of being or reality, of our true nature of being and reality, and how we found ourselves in the predicament, in the lowlands. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I'll repeat <clears throat> that it refers to the land of Canaan and the promised land, refers to what we transition into and possess energetically when we gain an absolute, <clears throat> complete, and holistic understanding, holistic thought and perception of the true nature of our being and reality. 
we have to understand <clears throat> our fall absolutely in absolute terms how we got to the lowlands how a blessing family became a curse how grace turned into a curse how yes turned into no after achieving a level of divine discernment that allows you me to absolutely distinguish between what is false deceptive and illusory one can then enter into a level of consciousness that allows thy will purpose intent to be done on earth as it is in heaven and referring back to what the question that Seven Bomar said that he would ask, how can I put myself in a position where everything will work out to my favor? Mm -hmm. Family, yes. that is the true understanding of grace. Yes. The true understanding of grace. <clears throat> We're not begging, imploring, entreating anyone to have grace, mercy, show us any favor. Because <clears throat> we have removed ourselves or are removing ourselves from a hierarchical uh, mentality, from that paradigm. That paradigm must end. And we must see ourselves as divinity that has what? Descended into the lowland into the land of Canaan. But we must escape that land. We must invert that. We must flip it and turn that into the land of milk and honey, the promised land, the place on the earth where the intentions, purposes, the will of our hearts is mm -hmm. manifested in life experience. And so with that, I'm going to end and say wholeness and divinity to all. Shalom.